Fine. Yeah. So let me give some brief info about myself and Viber Technologies. So Viber Technology we started in 2013, and uh, since then I am working for WebLogic administration process. And I also taught many Python WLST courses for automation and uh, shell scripting. So these are the three different courses I handled so far. So this time I am handling this DevOps this year um, because I already worked on these technologies which are currently trending and which is very much required uh, relating to the web logic. So that's why the course title is mentioned as a web logic with DevOps. So we are not going beyond the web logic. So whatever we are learning, everything will be relevant to the web logic products or web logic related uh, applications okay so this uh, we are going to cover completely from the beginning to the end of uh, ci cd process which is required what is the ci cd ci cd continuous integration continuous delivery okay so this continuous integration and delivery is a basic requirement for agile methodology so most of the projects running with uh, different uh, product life cycle methodologies. So waterfall model was a earlier old model and now uh, people are looking for the agile methodology for better performance of the project, whole project. Why? Because the features what they want to deliver to the client or customer. So for example, I have given in the previous also, I am repeating the same thing. but yeah as you are not there so amazon is a top number one e-commerce website if you take any website e-commerce site top one is amazon so how it is become why what is the uh, secret behind that one the best uh, implementation of this ci cd they did and they are succeeding amazon Amazon e-commerce site, what they are doing, you know the site, you can see the same website in the mobile in a flexible format, you can see in the tab, you can see in the laptop, you can see on the desktop, everywhere it is comfortably fit into the screen and very comfortably customer can select what they want, most of the categories are there, so they are also giving different web services, right? So when they are going to use this uh, e-commerce site, what benefit they are looking for the customer? What they are first focused is the best uh, product updates they want or offers updates they want. So these things they are doing in a day 200 times deployments. New feature change is coming onto the site 200 times in a day that is a capability they brought into this agile methodology with that they, are, they bought it. So how it is possible, how that is completely automated. The end to end process starting from the source code changes. What is source code? Your programs, Java program, JavaScript, HTML, JSP, anything that is related to the coding. That code we are going to store at one place that we are going to call as a source um, repository <coughs> okay so this source code repository we are going to store either SVN or git github okay so private repositories public repositories these are the different things are there so that is where starting point the developers are developing the code but how you can manage okay so the code we are going to maintain in a repository that should not conflict same Java program is developed by one person that is edited by Y person. Okay, so that person is editing at the same time some lines of code, some function you are writing. That ten lines are there. Within that ten lines, somebody else is also changing. So here is a management skill of your C SEM management skills required. So source code, how we are going to manage so that all the required finalized changes should go to the delivery okay so that is what your first part 
SEM part. Okay, so how you store, how do you manage on the Git on the SVN? That is the first thing. Developer side, that is the first step. Second step, from there where it goes? From there it is going to process of compilation. Java program is there, he compiled in his system, but that should be compiled and it will be delivered to the testing environment. That may be QA test, that may be functional test, that may be uh, regression test or different performance load test. So we want to deliver it to different number of uh, sites or uh, servers. So that delivery is deployment you are saying. So continuous deployment you want to make it happen. So how this is going to happen? What is the, What are the different types of tools available in the market? So we have a couple of different uh, tools. Um, we have one of them is Jenkins most popular and open source. Okay, Jenkins. Jenkins. Hudson is the original one. It was with Oracle. So Oracle never uh, put anything on or, uh, open source. So here Jenkins is open source and most of the community members are keep on updating and a lot of plugins are developed that is available. So other than Jenkins, is there any other uh, options are there for this? What we are looking for is continuous integration. So support maintenance and your deployment. This entire thing will be uh, handled by one tool that is this one CI. Continuous integration tool. Jenkins is a CI tool. Okay, so Jenkins CI tool, similar to this one, we have Circle CI, uh, Trench CI. So these are our different tools, but most popular one, which is easiest to learn, that is Jenkins. So what we'll do, we'll try to get the code from the SVN or Git and try to deploy onto one of the target server. This server may be WebLogic server, this may be Tomcat, this may be JBoss, this may be WebSphere. So that is a possibilities options. So we will do on WebLogic. So what would uh, Jenkins will do? Yeah. This tool will be doing this CI CD. CI okay. control get the code put into this one. So that process will be automated. You want to put some time every night. You want to schedule. I told you Jeff, uh, Amazon is doing 200 times in, in a day. So it is possible. Man cannot do that many times. Deployment exactly going to the server or not, deployment is active or not, everything will be taken care by Jenkins. Jenkins, you have a scheduler. Just like our cron job, in Unix we have cron job, you are going to give some time, exactly at that particular time, it is going to trigger automatically and that job will be executed. So in Jenkins also we will have set of jobs we, we can configure. The job will be take care of deployment. Job will take care of some of the activity which you want to do. Whatever you are doing manually, that will be done by the Jenkins. Okay. So uh, that is about CI/CD part. Then uh, what we are going to look for WebLogic virtualization. What is this virtualization? Nowadays everybody talking about virtualization with respect to cloud. There are many clouds, and every cloud, uh, whenever you are going to connect and access AWS, Azure, DigitalOcean, all these are different clouds which are uh, very popular right now. Top one is AWS, right? And even Oracle is also having a couple of cloud environments. So before going to the cloud, if you save time, if you just keep running instance on that, it will be only useful to run means you are not wasting that uh, time. So it's a metered metered usage of the machine. Okay. So when you are going to keep an instance on the AWS Linux machine or you are taking some Solaris machine, when you are paying for that one, exactly you are getting benefit of that one. You are putting for hosting that for a business cost. Okay. So before doing deploying onto the cloud, you should be ready how you can make that one. That is what virtualization. Okay. So this virtualization, we have different options, multiple options. Oracle is having Oracle VirtualBox. 
VMware is having VM player and many other things are parallels are also there. So these are all different uh, lightweight box means Linux means Linux box, CentOS means CentOS, Solaris means Solaris. That kind of virtual boxes will be created and that will be easy to migrate, shipped to the any cloud environment. So cloud on premises if you compare data centers are costlier compared to cloud. So we want to save money whenever you are going to use a cloud exactly you want to use it for the purpose why you uh, take that cloud. Okay. So before that one you are going to use that one. So virtualization came for that one. Right. So Virtualization in virtual box, we will create one Linux box and try to install web logic and apply the application how it works, we'll see. The next thing is, now better than virtualization, we have containerization. What is this containerization? Why we are going to have? Containerization. So there is a huge market requirement now with respect to containerization. Containerization, you can start one Linux box, start one Linux box in virtual box in minutes, in few minutes. Same Linux box, you just hit the command CLA in a command it will be fraction of seconds to bring up. That is a difference between virtualization and containerization. A lot of differences are there. I will deeply discuss with you in the session when we talk about Docker uh, virtualization and then Docker. So we'll go in a, a step by step. In that time, we will be discussing all differences step by step. What is a uh, tabular format? I will show you all. Okay. Once you understand this containerization, then we'll talk about uh, Minikube. Minikube. What is this uh, uh, Minikube? So high availability of containerization or uh, clustering of your containers is nothing but Kubernetes. Okay. So Kubernetes is a concept architecture. So Kubernetes implemented by Google. Kubernetes. Kubernetes is architecture, cluster architecture of uh, cluster of containers. Okay. Yes. Containers. So the Kubernetes, what we are using, what is implemented into uh, on premises or into a cloud, that requirements we will try to understand within your laptop we will build that with the locally build of your Kubernetes. Kubernetes master, Kubernetes slave. The cluster configuration, how it works, we can do with one single tool that is Minikube. Minikube is, we, it is useful for local laptops, not for the production systems. But we can make all those things, all commands you can execute and understand the things. Right? So this Kubernetes cluster, you can put it on AWS. Same Kubernetes cluster, you can keep it on Azure. We can put it on digital ocean. So this is before going to the cloud containers, if you prepare, if you understand, within fraction of seconds, you can bring up the environment. Right? So if you have simulated, if you understand. Yes, yes. So it's a uh, pre-build activities we are going to do. All those which are really required, how it is going to work, what are the commands required. Uh, we'll try to see one WebLogic cluster run in Kubernetes, Minikube. Okay. So that is... So Minikube means a single instance for cluster we need Kubernetes, right? Single instance is single without cluster. We are using Minikube. Every, every terminology is very, very important here. No instance concept here. What I am saying? Container. Containers cluster is Kubernetes. Kubernetes we can put in laptop. Locally you want to run, Minikube will be used. Okay. Laptop, 
we will we will install first virtual and virtual machine. On that virtual machine, we will create small small containers using Docker, and we will create a cluster of it using Minikube. Yes. Yes. And then we will try to deploy uh, or install the logic inside this small small containers. Small containers. containers. Yes. Which is nothing but a lightweight operating system. Yes. So when we come to that, we will be detailed, deep discussion. We'll have that, and we'll have the architecture of each one. What is container will have? What is Docker will have? Docker containers we are saying. So Docker containers, how this will go into the Kubernetes? We'll see. So it is looks like when I am saying all this, it will be <laughs> yeah. So what we are going to discuss just in a high high level and. So uh, whenever we are learning about WebLogic, WebLogic administration, normally we will talk uh, database, data sources, how it is going to configure. So we will configure one uh, database on your Docker. Okay, One container will create Oracle XC and then we will try to connect with the WebLogic domain. Okay, One more thing is uh, in DevOps, in current market, people are more uh, focused on configuration management tools. Configuration management tool, there are a lot of tools, there are a lot of scripting uh, options are available. So shell script is first thing, but what are the negative or weaknesses that will be you have to suppress with new technologies, new tools. Okay, so if you take shell script, it is able to do remote connection it is able to do install of WebLogic, it is able to do whatever the uh, task you have for uh, dev operations. But it is incapable of some of the things. So to suppress that one, best tools we have to choose. So Chef, Puppet or uh, Ansible. So these are the three different tools in the current market. Puppet is the oldest. Almost 12 years over. So Puppet oldest tool, it is based on Ruby programming language. Okay, and uh, Chef widely used, and it is having different variants. Chef, if you are going to use, uh, it is having a Chef Knife, Chef Workstation. Okay, so Chef Knife, if you are using, it will be used within your one single node. If you want to use master slave concept in Chef, configuration management completely handle that one and th that is going to have UI, that is second option, that is Chef workstation. Okay, so Chef is going down now, Ansible is growing much more because of flexibility, easy way of accessing. Uh, one common difference between Puppet Chef with Ansible is Puppet Chef requires one software need to be installed on every node remote machine. There you have to install agent. Then only it is able to communicate with the remote machines to do the configuration task. Okay. But Ansible, it doesn't require. It is going to connect with SSH. SSH is by default on every Linux machine, it is possible. Okay. So Ansible, if you are taking, it is perfectly works on Linux platforms. What is the disadvantage in Windows systems? It is not that flexible. If, if your customer requires Windows platform, you want to build WebLogic environment, then uh, Ansible is not right thing. Okay. So Ansible right now it is uh, and uh, two different uh, variants. One is open source, another one is Red Hat uh, Ansible. Red Hat Ansible is known as a tower, uh, Ansible tower. 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 T-O-W-E-R. T-O-W-E-R. Tower. T-O-W-E-R. Yes. Okay. So these are the things we are going to discuss in the every weekend session. Every session, three hours we are expecting maximum. Okay. So in the session, we are going to take one break and uh, We'll have uh, each and every session presentation will be shared with you and uh, recording will be shared with you 
and also you are going to have uh, material or commands whatever we executed on that day that will be uh, copied to notepad and that will be shared with you in the google drive okay so in a high level what we are going to talk uh, day one web logic devops virtualization means that vagrant and uh, virtual box what we are going to use how it is going to connect in middleware architecture that what you uh, expecting web logic architecture how it is going to work what is that so that we'll discuss in detail and then web logic domain what are the main important areas like uh, web logic admin server manage server how they are communicating what makes them cluster what is a machine what is node manager all this we'll discuss in the day one and we'll configure we'll install and uh, configure so whenever we are doing this installation configuration devops always focus on automation so automation means you don't use mouse and click that means config.sh you don't use when you are using domain creation don't use wizard whenever you are installing web logic don't use mouse and click so that is what our intention so how to do silent mode installation so what is silent mode installation how you can do that one okay so we'll try to do that so before doing that uh, that is what i have given a link website link from there all the softwares you have to download okay so once again i'll show that um, so we uh, say in the lab part we are not using this console and everything admin also will be there but uh, uh, you, you are going to use this uh, vnc viewer linux box right yeah, linux so box. our linux box completely cli it doesn't have any gui that is the main thing so when i'm creating a linux box in virtual box it will be created with uh, 300 to 600 mb size only if you go for the iso file for installing red hat linux it will be 7 gb you can understand the difference very 600 mb very 7 gb so huge difference so this the space for only installation software this much is reduced that means the required softwares what this virtualization and docker containerization what they are doing actually why this is so much fast you know they are not starting all the services which are not required you are not going to use that is the best thing they are doing you know there is a kernel software in linux they are public linux provolo published only kernel software and all people are taken that one and started running their own linux ubuntu linux their own linux again they have different flavors red hat different flavors centos red hat linux is different suse different mint os different so every flavor is having their own different uh, wrappers on the kernel so if you take original code then what we need for running a server only that part will take and try to work on that so that is what virtual boxes that is what containers okay so core os is recently in devops most of the projects they are using unnecessary uh, libraries are not required which are required only that libraries will take to run web server we need only apache related libraries required or any whatever the nginx or whatever the web server you want only that software is required no other thing so this way you are reducing the size of the disk so that the startup time will be very less. very very minimal that is a overall uh, concept of this virtualization and containerization okay so we'll talk in that uh, day to about cluster of your web logic and then we'll come into your kubernetes cluster then we'll talk about docker in the data okay so we'll we'll see if possible ansible ci cd on the day two if possible i'm saying because it might not happen in the day two because uh, it may take longer time okay so 
that will be pushed to the second or uh, third day ansible okay so application deployment we'll see with the jenkins configuration we'll install jenkins and try to run one deployment we try to understand how it is going to work in basic what are the commands we can do how we can create a job in a jenkins step by step basic things will complete then we'll try to <coughs> go further so no hurries no uh, hypes nothing so what i am going to say i am putting into this slides i'm not giving very huge agenda i'm not putting very lengthy things uh, what i did only that things i have kept in the this day by day by sheet but i'm sure that i will complete what i have given in my slide definitely i will cover all these things i am not saying exactly this will be completed within second day no that is not okay and <clears throat> yeah so as i mentioned database connection we are going to create one container uh, database docker container we will try to create because we already understand kubernetes docker then immediately you can go for the database container it's easy thing then we can communicate we try to understand then after data source configuration then we'll go for the jms so this is the most common thing requirement but if you go for a higher uh, high end or advanced uh, devops thing there you need to understand what is kafka so whatever you are seeing today facebook g plus youtube all these are using same concept okay you have a friend you are sending a message one to one you have a facebook account you are putting the message that it will be visible to all friends that is publish and subscribe so how this will work what is the concept behind this one we try to understand all the java messaging system concepts okay completely configuration communication between the different uh, system jms systems you may have today weblogic domain on that one jms is running this weblogic domain running jms you want to communicate with the websphere jms or mq jms or you want to connect with the rabbit mq so any mq that is going to run a jms service you can send message and receive message with two different destinations with two different destinations one is queue another one is topic okay so we are going to discuss we will try to create queue topic in the weblogic domain send the message receive the message that is also we will try to test okay so this will do on the day 3 this again we will be doing through jms yeah weblogic weblogic completely on the on top of weblogic platform we will and so we will be creating on this yes yeah, yeah. so next important thing is everybody is looking for cloud people try to uh, understand about identity management so weblogic related weblogic uh, created users will try to uh, understand relm security relm where you are going to create users groups principles roles responsibilities how we are going to assign and try to test okay that is one thing the second thing is your application web applications are uh, required to be https why we need this one https what is the need we try to understand each and every step right yeah. and uh, we will create the certificate generation what are the steps required how to import the certificate okay then we try to understand uh, what are the configuration parameters for this ssl you will configure on weblogic admin console that console what you are you are using that will be accessed with https okay we will be using demo certificate we will be using self signed certificate we will see that one okay and in real time projects most of the time we are going to use real certificate that is be delivered by the ca certificate so geo trust or over design so these are all different uh, certificate uh, authorities okay and uh, we are going to talk more about uh, vulnerabilities now 
any financial banking projects they are made it mandatory you must use a java platform with latest cpu patches what this will be giving they are going to find all the loopholes in this text in 2006 they form a separate body and they are searching for all java products what are the missings where is the loophole from that it is going to make uh, security hackers can hack okay so that points they collected all of them and every year they uh, distribute that work into three months by uh, three months okay so critical patches they are distributing Oracle is distributing all the patches JDK level, WebLogic level, Fusion middleware level, SOA level so every product is publishing patch so if you are going to work with the Fusion middleware SOA you have to use OPatch to update this one okay so JDK you have to install latest version of JDK but when you change the JDK what are the things you need to change in your existing environment you are already running one environment product is running project is running in that case what are the things you need to change we try to see all of them and understand in detail okay then we'll see what are the possibilities of automation in monitoring okay so WLST JMX these are the two different things which don't require any external software it will be within your web logic itself you install web logic you can do that one. okay so JMX is Java program WLST is Python based program okay so what are the things you can handle you can monitor you can see the values at different levels okay that we'll see and try to understand in detail about how a queue the message which you are sending that should be secured only that will be delivered to one person who is going to be intended okay that will test in the day four okay and then uh, web server configuration proxy configuration OHS and uh, Apache these two will compare and try to understand which is the best one because you people are interested in going forward so uh, so definitely you need uh, Oracle Fusion middleware and OHS so we'll try to understand all the possible uh, requirements then uh, any administrator operational guy requires to do different tuning of uh, components so it may be from the system level it may be from your web logic perspective so system level CPU memory network what are the things you need to change we we'll try to understand and then understand about JVM every managed server is one JVM admin server is a JVM so what are the parameters required how the garbage collection will happen how many types of garbage collection algorithms are there and uh, from 8 JDK 8 what are the latest algorithms supported we'll talk in detail understand which one is the best suit for uh, which kind of project we'll talk then uh, different types of issues out of memory one of the scenario we will try to understand uh, how to make one server overloading all the threads will be uh, hangs then server will be hanged then how to resolve that one what is the solution so we we'll try to make that practically see that one and uh, take a thread dump heap dump if you take a thread dump heap dump what are the values you need to look inside people say it's a very simple thread dump kill minus 3 you can do it but what you need to see in that file log file is generated which tool I have to use if you use then where to see lot of lines are there lot of threads are there different types of threads which thread I have to look for so these things we will discuss in detail heap dump the memory related issues of JVM so heap uh, different uh, compartments are there different algorithm dif different uh, cleaning process is going to happen so if your objects are unintentionally storing in your JVM then your server is no more responding it is process is running it is not able to respond that means hang 
server crash is different server hang is different so what is this makes server crash that server uh, hangs where is the memory problem how it is going to uh, stagnate that all the requests we'll try to understand that yeah. in detail sometimes so it happens in our environment yeah other what happens that there is one java process mm -hmm. Manage server process, yeah. which is consuming around uh, 400 CPU, 400, not even 100, 400, and that will increase the load average to 40, 50 yeah. of the server, uh -huh. and server will be totally hanged, and then it will force to be killed it so that no manager will be started, okay. without understanding what is exactly is causing that issue. Again, so, we will, again it will come, again we will be killed. We do the same process. But we are not understanding. To, I, I, this the same thing the I said which you system. just said that is 400 percent is CPU occupied that means it is a load on processor it is a load on threads yeah. so it is obviously problem with threads the threads are not sufficient the threads are not doing the work which is required to do means what they are doing at that time so you need to understand you take the thread dump you need to read the thread dump, understand that where is a problem. So what kind of exceptions? How many types of exceptions you are getting? So which one you are closing? Which one you are able to stop? So these are the main important things. This will be there in time. Definitely we will discuss in detail about that. We try to do kill minus three as you go. Yes. We also did the same thing. But then it is having so much of data without understanding what exactly is causing the issue. Correct. So Where to look, you don't know, then it is useless. So we thought people were oh, better to kill and they don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The operation between threat dumps or giving workloads. That is what they, what they will do. Then after that, they are also doing analysis. They are doing two ways. Uh, one is uh, what is happening from the Java perspective. Another one is what is happening from the JVM perspective. Only two things we need to relate and try to find where is the problem. So once you find that one, then how to rectify uh, that, how to retune it. That is what uh, thing. And sometimes we have seen lot of garbage collections will happen. Uh, repeatedly, full GC will happen. All the other GC, GC, GC is happening and load average is increasing. Obviously. Uh, and uh, again we used to see Some it. of the object <laughs> will be blocking, then now that will happen. Yeah. But what algorithm it is using, that is the important thing. And we yeah. actually those things also correct, correct. We will talk in detail each one, and you also discuss with your problems, and we will talk yes. in detail. Okay. So that is the overall course. What I meant, the logic with DevOps. So we are touching up all the latest tools and the web logic. So we are doing this activity in one thing. Commuting down the road. Okay, yes. Hello? I mentioned every day session I am going to have a presentation and I am going to give you whatever the commands we execute we do the practical things all will be collected and given as a notes so that will be shared in the Google Drive so every day session I will be recording and delivering definitely so uh, sir, actually I have three questions just one no, 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 she will handle only managerial <laughs> Okay, so here uh, you can see this is a link and um, we are able to see. Okay, so this list is download list. You can download Vagrant, you can download Oracle VirtualBox latest version. You can download Putty Terminal, you should have uh, minimum SSH capabilities okay and the JDK 6 and 7 must be there uh, to attend the first day session day one session required up to 7 to download 
8 also you need to download notepad plus plus minimum requirement okay So, Vagrant download means the first one? Uh, first one. So, whenever you are going to use uh, Vagrant, it is allows you to make your laptop as a virtualization capability. So, it is going to use uh, hypervisor inside. So, this is a software where you are going to download 64-bit Windows platform. Okay. So, that is requirement. I don't think so actually, uh, it will take time for us because whatever the words you are using today, it will be hard for us. You don't have to do it, you are IT people, you are already working. It's not difficult to do it. Okay, I'm going to say that it's not good. But it's still one more Kubernetes. You know, I'm going to say that it's not good. ये इसके जगह पे VM वगैरह होगा तो problem है back then we have to use and we have to install over Windows या so instead of VM वगैरह virtual box we are going to use और actually virtual box that is a much more flexible easiest one is back then is back then is back then is different back then is useful for both back then is a layer layer हाँ so what it तो उस back then का मतलब क्या है बिखारी big मांग लेता है so ये एक सॉफ्टवेयर क्या मांगता है वे ये वर्चुअल बॉक्स पे जाके पूछता है इसका सॉफ्टवेयर लिनक्स चलाने का है हार्डवेयर की रिसोर्सेस मेरे को दो सो इट इज गोइंग टू गेट रैम सीपीयू साइकिल्स एंड पूरा सिस्टम का रिसोर्सेस आफ्टर गेटिंग दैट इट विल क्रिएट द लिनक्स सो इट विल बी क्रिएटेड लेस स्पेस एज आई मेंशन 600 MB में आपकी बॉक्स बन जाएगा CLI निकल के आएगा इसे वैग्रेंट करता है वैग्रेंट करता है एक फाइल में लिखना है only one single file, it will be only 14 to 15 lines. I'll just show you that in the easy page may I look at. Vagrant ka file rata ni chhe look at. Ye Vagrant ka file. 17 lines hai. Isme kya dhe rahe hai? You are going to give iska RAM kitna ho na hai. Ab 14 ka line dhe kye hai. Memory 4096. Simply you are giving there. It will create the virtual box with 4 GB RAM. How many CPUs? Aapke system, four core CPU aisa kuch rehta hai. So, two cores will be given to this Linux. So, simply you are giving in one line, it will be created. What kind of Linux operating system you want? You are saying Oracle Linux, you are saying Ubuntu, you are going to say in Ubuntu different flavors are there. Precise 64, precise 32 bit. So, you see the line in line number 5. So precise 32. This is the Ubuntu version. Okay. So that box is already somebody created for us. It is very smaller size, and that we are going to use in our laptop. Okay. So precise 64, trusty 64. These are the Ubuntu flavors. Okay. So we will be using Linux. I mean, Ubuntu or some Ubuntu. Okay. We'll use Ubuntu. So my easiest one. So my laptop may be virtual machine. Ah. तो वर्चुअल मशीन बीएम में रहे हैं वर्चुअल बॉक्स है बीएम में उसके अंदर में मैं इंस्टॉल किया लाइनेक्स को डिलीट किया लाइनेक्स का ये जो इमेज यूज़ कर रहे हैं ये इंस्टॉल करके सब कुछ किया यहाँ पे आप बोल रहे हैं नहीं वो यूज़ नहीं करेंगे ये सब नहीं करेंगे ब्रेडरेंट करेंगे फिर वर्चुअल मशीन भी एडमिनिस्ट्रेटर हाँ if we are into DevOps, so suppose, do we need to do all these things? Definitely. In this way, we will be able to do it. We will be able to do it. We will be able to do it. जो काम में आएगा जो काम में करा वही मैं लगाया और सब वर्ड्स हैं जो जो आप बताए तो आपको तो पता है वैगन तो पहली बार इसलिए मैं पेज में भी दे दिया उसमें आपको ब्लॉग फॉलो करना पड़ेगा रीड करना पड़ेगा करने के बाद एक बार कमेंट भी करना पड़ेगा 
चलिए सो और कुछ एनी अदर थिंग्स यू वॉन्ट वॉस और कंटेंट फाइन है आपको और कुछ करना है इसमें कुछ निकालना है डिफिकल्ट लग रहा है तो अभी कल अगर कर, तो करना है हम लोगों को तो हम लोगों को ये सब डाउनलोड करके आना हाँ सिर्फ डाउनलोड करके आना है